Hi everyone, this is part 3 of Baked Numbers. If you haven't watched the first two videos, make sure you watch them first before watching this one. So today, we're going to talk about three numbers. The Mega, the Megaston, and the Mosa. These three numbers are not as well known as the Google, Googleplex, and Graham's number. They came from this Steinhaus Moser notation, which is a notation for expressing certain extremely large numbers, such as these three. Now let's look at the definitions. So the first definition is n in a triangle, which is just n to the power of n. Simple. The second definition is n in a square, which is equal to n inside n triangles. The third definition is n in a pentagon, which is equal to n inside n squares. Now let's look at some examples. Let's say now n is 2. So 2 in a triangle is equal to 2 to the power of 2 because it just means n to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Now what is 2 in a square? So 2 in a square means 2 inside 2 triangles. So just the same as this, the second definition. So two inside two triangles, it looks something like this. So two inside two triangles. So two in a triangle is four, right? So that means two in two triangles is equal to four in a triangle because two in a triangle is four. So this is equal to four in a triangle, which is equal to four to the power of 4, which is equal to 256. Hopefully you're still with me. So next, let's look at 2 in a pentagon. So 2 in a pentagon is 2 inside 2 squares. So this is the definition, right? So, 2 inside 2 squares, it looks like some something like this. And since 2 in a square here is equal to 256, so that means 2 inside 2 square is equal to 256 in a square. And that's the definition of mega. So mega is two in a pentagon. So now you may ask, so how big is mega? So mega is, again, is 256 in a square. That means, look at this definition, this second definition. This means is 256 inside 256 triangles. So imagine that, so it's going to be a very big number. So how big is 256 inside 256 triangles? Well, the first triangle is 256 to the power of 256, which is the first definition here. So n in a triangle equals n to the power of n. So we can define this as a. And remember, this is already a pretty big number. For the second triangle, it will be this guy over here, which is a to the power of a. And we can define this as b. For the third triangle, it will be b to the power of b. And we could define this as c, and so on. 
and we have to continue this for 256 steps. Once we work all the way down to the 256 steps, we would finally arrive at mega. So can you ever imagine how big is a mega? A mega is between 10, 2 arrow, 257, and 10, 2 arrows, 258. So if you have watched the previous videos, you would know what 2 arrow means. So 2 arrow basically means, um, in this case, 10, 2 arrow, 257. It will be a power tower of 10. Um, there are a lot of 10s. How many 10s? There are 257 10s. So this power tower contains 257 levels, which is a huge number. Um, remember, so the Google is between 2, I mean 10, 2 arrow, 2, and 10, 2 arrow, 3. And the Googleplex is between 10, 2 arrow, 3, and 10, 2 arrow, 4. So now you can see, like this number, a tiny compared to this over here. So this number only has, um, this power, power tower only has four tens in it. But this one has 257 tens. So this is 257 levels. This one only has four levels. So now we can conclude that the Mega is much, much, much bigger than the Googleplex. So now we know that the Mega is a very big number. But what, what about the Megaston? So Megaston, the definition is 10 inside a pentagon. So 10 in a pentagon, what does it mean? It means 10 inside 10 squares because of this definition, the third one. So n in a pentagon is n inside n squares. So 10 in a pentagon would be 10 inside 10 squares. So it's going to be a very, very big number. So with the mega, the mega is just two in the pentagon. But the megaston is 10 in the pentagon. So we can already tell that the megaston is a number much bigger than the mega. So how big is a megaston? So the Megaston is between 10, 3 arrows, 11, and 10, 3 arrows, 12. So 10, 3 arrows, 11, it's equal to 10, 2 arrow, 10, 2 arrow, 10, 2 arrow, 10, da 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 da, 10 arrow, 10, arrow, 10, double arrow, 10, double arrow, 10, and there are 11 tens in here so it's a very very big number so this thing here is much much bigger than 10 to arrow 258 so just this part here is already much big much bigger than this and there are many more steps over here so lastly, what about the Mosa? So the definition of the Mosa is two in a megagon. And a megagon is a polygon with mega size. So mega, remember the mega that we talked about before is a huge number, which is um, approximately 10 to arrow 257. So this megagon has this many size so remember 
the Pentagon only has five size and two in the Pentagon is mega which is around this number but the Mosa is not two in a Pentagon is two in a megagon with this many size so this number is much bigger than five right because because in a pentagon there are five size and this one has this many size so immediately we already know mosa is going to be much much bigger than the mega and in fact it's also much much bigger than the megaston so how big is the mosa so the Mosa is between two arrows, I mean with a lot of arrows, how many arrows? They are up around Mega minus two arrows, followed by a three. So it's between this and this number. So this is two with a Mega minus two arrows, four. So, since Omega minus 2 is uh, around Omega, so Omega is a big number. So that means this number has many, many, many arrows between the 2 and the 3. So the Mosa is a very big number. So now we know that Mosa is a very, 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 very big number. But how big is it compared to another big number such as grams number so 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 you may ask is grams number bigger than this or, or is mosa bigger so let's find out so the mosa is between this number and this number and this number has many arrows so how many arrows does it have it has around mega arrows so this is two with omega arrows three so since omega is between 10 to arrow 257 and 10 to arrow 258 so we can conclude that um, the mega so the mosa has around this number of arrows and now let's look at G1. So G1 is the first step to construct Graham's number. It is three, four arrows, three with four arrows. So now we can see that the Mosa is much bigger than G1. Why? Because G1 has only four arrows and the Mosa has this many arrows. This is a big number compared to four. I mean, this is much bigger than four. So the Mosa is much bigger than G1. But then what about G2? So G2 has G1 number of arrows. So G2 has this many arrows. So which one is bigger? Is the Mosa bigger or G2? So the Mosa has around this many arrows, right? I mean, it, it actually has less than this number of arrows. So let's say the Mosa has this number of arrows, 10 to arrow 258. And this number is much, much smaller than 3, 4 arrow 3. So this number has 4 arrows. But this number is only has two. So this number here is much bigger than this one. But this is the number of arrows in Demosa. And this is the number of arrows in G2. So what can we conclude? So the conclusion is Demosa is between G1 and G2. And which is I mean, G2 is much smaller than G64, obviously, and G64 is Graham's number. So we can finally conclude that the Moser is much smaller than 
grams number. So there we have it. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the little gram. So if you want to know what is the little gram, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.